A white man signs. This is five, oh, four. He holds a faded, torn poster. All persons with disabilities, the federal government is trying to steal our civil rights. Demonstrate to demand signing of 504 regulations. Words appear. The Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University invites you to discover a remarkable overlooked moment in U.S. history. When people with disabilities occupied the federal building in San Francisco for 26 days, to demand their civil rights. A black and white photo of a black man slides left and is joined by a video of the man. It was, it was just a great, a great time, a moment in history. Words appear, known as the Section 504 sit-in, the protest profoundly changed the lives of people with and without disabilities and paved the way for the Americans with Disabilities Act, ADA, in 1990. A black and white photo of an Asian man in a wheelchair, a color photo of him laughing. The plan was originally for the demonstrators to be outside. A few of us were to go in and make appointments. And when the time came to leave, we didn't leave. An empty chair by figures sleeping on a mattress on the floor. Vintage color footage of the marchers outside. The occupiers inside. A hand-lettered sign, support, not sympathy. A photo, a video of a white man. He signs. We live here. We are part of your world. We exit. And they realize that this is a this is a a time where they can actually have some kind of empowerment. Where they could actually say to the government, we're not going to take the kind of standards that you've given us before. There were no ramps for disabled persons at the time. There were no elevators for the disabled. We would like more a piece of the American pie. This is the first time that I've come out in a, in a real public way and said, hey, no, I don't accept that. You know, I am not second class and I don't accept that. Are we going to perpetuate segregation in our society? We're one of the largest minorities in in this country. I can tell you that every time you raise issues of separate but equal, the outrage of disabled individuals across this country is going to continue. It is going to be ignited. There will be more takeovers of buildings until finally maybe you begin to understand our position. A black and white photo of a white woman with glasses and dark wavy hair. People had been waiting since 1973 for the regulations to be issued. On TV. Instead of giving in, they move in in what will become the longest occupation of a federal building in U.S. history. 504 means access to public transportation and public spaces. It means free public education and no job discrimination. All basic American civil rights, proud and defiant, Five to six hundred people in wheelchairs with walking canes and hearing aids storm the regional office of health, education, and welfare in San Francisco. Their purpose? To stop discrimination against the disabled, no matter what the consequences. There were huge windows in the federal building, and there were people signing the press releases on one side of the windows to people who would re-sign them on the ground to make sure they got it right. That's the way that I know that we got the press releases out. On TV. Currently here is being brought over by Delancey Street. However, the Salvation Army has not been able to come up with blankets or cots, that sort of thing, so they are still frantically out looking for that. The regional commissioner's office got turned into the refrigerator because he put the plastic over the air conditioner, draped it across the room over a table and down in front of the table. And so underneath was freezing. And the Black Panther Party was there every day, bringing us really good food and settling disagreements amongst the people that were getting frazzled and worn out and stuff. And we had an understanding that our oppression was not the only form of oppression in America. I think this is going to end up being a historical event for the country and beyond that, because this is whether the Montgomery actions and civil rights movements, our stonewall and gay rights movements, and so on. This is 
the event in which disabled people said that we would assert our rights. A photo of a white woman with light brown hair. It wasn't typical for people with developmental disabilities and mental health disabilities and all these various um, disabilities that had not necessarily worked together before to really come together on one issue. I feel real good because it's like all this anger that I've had is finally making sense and it's being put, turned outward where it belongs yeah, yeah. into changing things and, and that feels really strong and positive. We were not the poor people to be kept in somebody's basement. We needed to be proud of having disabilities. A blind white woman. And being fully functional, not overcoming disabilities, but rather having disabilities and being fully functional human beings and that we could show the world that. On TV, victory for the disabled. Tonight, 35 million Americans are no longer second-class citizens. Regulation 504, what is being called a Bill of Rights for all of this country's handicap, has finally been signed by HEW Secretary Joseph Califano. Secretary of HEW Joseph Califano called them the oppressed and hidden minority. Vintage footage. The new rules will usher in a new era of civil rights that will change the face of America, starting with such things as curbstones at intersections. Programs in virtually every institution that receives government funds must be made accessible to the handicapped within two months. The protesters leave the building. We thank all of you who supported us from the outside. We worked so hard also. And I might add, the struggle has really just begun. There's so many more things we're going to have to deal with in the future. And this coalition is a part of a national movement, and we're going to stick together and continue to fight for our civil rights. Woo! Every person in that building was making a sacrifice of one form or another. And I think what came out of that was people realizing that in banding together and working together, you can get much more to happen than if everybody individually is trying to do something. People who exist, except us now, keep the movement alive. I think, you know, if we don't keep pushing you know, people will forget. Vintage footage. A hand-lettered sign. Rights for the disabled. Sign 504 unchanged. A woman dances with a man in a wheelchair. To learn more about the exhibit, visit patientnomore.org. Words appear in order of appearance. Bill Johnson, 504 protester. Ron Washington, 504 protester. Bruce Oka, 504 protester. Eddie Urigi, 504 protester. Dennis Billups, 504 protester. Judy Human, 504 protest organizer. Ed Roberts, disability activist and director of the California Department of Vocational Rehabilitation in 1977. Kitty Cohn, 504 protest organizer. Kathy Cramner, Swami Suharananda, 504 protester. Herb Levine, 504 protester. Bonnie Regina, 504 protester. Elaine Brown, chairman of the Black Panther Party in 1977. Mary Lou Breslin, 504 protester. Karen Rose, 504 protester. Linda Gill, 504 protester. Jim Angval, 504 protester. Jeff Moyer, 
musician leading crowd in song, and 504 protester. Patient No More is a project created by the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University to commemorate the 25th anniversary of the ADA, patientnomore.org. Interviews recorded in 2014 by undergraduate students from Journalism 321, History 484, and staff from the Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University. Additional footage provided by Disability Rights Education and Defense Fund and the GLBT Historical Society. Edited by Sachi Cunningham. Audio description by AudioEyes. Description voiced by Terry Grossman. Copyright Paul K. Longmore Institute on Disability at San Francisco State University, 2015.